Hi, everyone. Welcome back to MIT Is, the podcast. I am your host, Abi Lodo, joined by my co-host, Gabe. And we're here for another great episode um, and to talk about a lot of different things that have been happening at MIT and to shed light on our experiences and some more positive things that have happened at our time here. So to start, Gabe, how are you? Um, I'm, I'm pretty good. I've been thinking a lot about what we said last time. Uh, especially my comments about fraternities, uh, and I wanted to just give them some clarifications and addendums. Uh, we, we don't rehearse what we say on this podcast. We just choose <laughs> we topics don't. and then sort of like vaguely weave through them, mm-hmm. uh, which, which results in sometimes like accidentally erasing things or not talking about all of the nuances because there are a lot of nuances in everything we talk about. Uh, And just things like housing and personal learning experiences that can come from fraternity should not come at the expense of others. And I really do not want to minimize, and I think I should highlight here, um, how dangerous fraternities can and have been in the past. Um, And we really have to think about that when we, when we conceptualize groups of, of, of how, like groups for housing, groups of all men on campus, and just how we construct um, the spaces that we inhabit. So we have mm-hmm. to be, we have to be very critical as always. Mm-hmm. Um, I left out a number of things that, uh, of my experience, but just wanted to clarify that, you know, it's, it's not all, it's not all just learning. Sometimes it's, you know, not, not great things. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. I think when we come on here, some things that we talk about aren't completely thought through or processed and we're still navigating this crazy institute. So, um, you know, thank you so much for our listeners to just listen to us um, and hear what we have to say. And um, yeah, I think that's like the great thing about having a podcast or a platform to speak about different things that you've gone through. It's it's a way of processing for us as well. Um, So, yeah. uh, Just to add a little bit more, I'm still sort of processing my experience there. I actually left with, with um, some parts of my family line, which is the people that you're closest to. Mm-hmm. Um, because we were trying to reform uh, the, the group. We wanted um, a gender neutral space. Mm-hmm. We thought that, that would address some of the issues with you know, gender discrimination and, and uh, the, the homogeneity and, and dangers that come with just accepting only one gender and keeping that uh, heteronormative standard, but um, you know, not everyone wanted that, and they may have been right that that may not have been better. Um, mm. but that's okay. Uh, I'm now where I am, and they are where they are, and I hope them the best. Awesome. So you know, the past. So right now, when we're recording, it is November fifteenth. We've gone through a lot in the past week or so. Um, an entire election happened. Um, and there's been a lot of shifting uh, parts in our country and also here at the Institute. So maybe we should talk a little bit about how that has been for us, you know, what we've experienced, what we've seen, um, and how we are sort of handling that ourselves. So what were you doing election night? <laughs> um, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> I had a piece at do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's so okay. Election day should absolutely be a holiday. I do not, <laughs> it's not a holiday. Yeah, everyone just needs to have time and space to vote. It yeah, is not something that could be left to the people with a privilege to just take the day off and wait. Mm-hmm. Um, and we should also shouldn't have to register. But. Yeah, that's true. So, did you did you vote early or did you vote same day? Oh, this is very unfortunate. So I, I tried to vote. Um, I tried to vote early. I mm-hmm. requested my ballot, but my ballot's from California, mm-hmm. and I never got it. Um, uh. And I wanted to like keep up with it and and ask. Um, but honestly, I, I should should have just registered here. The reason I wanted to vote in California though is because um, I re- I had a lot of down ballot issues, which are the issues like that are lower than the presidential level and mm-hmm. the bottom um, that I was really interested in. Um, and California did, did not do well um, on down ballot issues. We, 
I felt a bunch of very like pro corporate things. Um, yeah. You know, but uh, some some good things, some good news. I guess we got rid of um, Jackie Lacey, who was the DA for LA County. I was going to ask you about that because I I was I've been looking into that in my mass incarceration class. Yeah. So yeah. Jackie Lacey is out. Um, unfortunately, she's being replaced with someone who was a career police officer. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it looked like he's more reformist, uh, and also the all of the pro police people donated against him. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. but you know, reform is is low. Yeah. Um, so were you trying to finish the pizza, or or what was? <laughs> so I okay, I voted same day, which was weird, because it felt like everyone was voting early, um, which was good, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I chose not to. I have always had a great experience. I am registered here on campus. Um, so I've had a great experience voting to here. So I just, you know, to make sure that there was no sort of suppression or anything, I just was like, I'm going to fill in my ballot and put it into the machine. Um, so I felt like bad doing it last minute because everyone had already voted, but um, I did that. In Massachusetts, something that was really important was our ranked vote, ranked, ranked choice voting. Uh, unfortunately, it failed, um, which is unfortunate, but that was something I was excited to vote in. Um, we also had other like smaller elections going on here. So yeah, it, it was just sort of exciting. This was my first presidential election. Last election, I was literally four days too young to vote. <laughs> So it was good to just vote for the first time. It felt good. Um, and there was definitely uncertainty after the election, but um, I think for the most part, things were pretty calm over here in Massachusetts. So that was yeah. good. Yeah, we're about to see what happens, but for now yeah. it does look like there is a clear winner. Yeah, which is, which is and it was, it was like, it was tense to just wait for days um, to see like who was president, but I mean, hey, <laughs> at least at least we can be sort of happy about the outcome of it. And um, the night that you saw me, um, we were like out just sort of like happy about the election and such. So that was okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You you happy. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted to talk about uh, possibly future happenings on this podcast. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we were thinking about possibly uh, future interviews. Um, it's just been us talking, which is, you know, fine, but there are other people mm -hmm. uh, with opinions that we could ask. Um, yeah. So we've reached out to a few people. We're setting that up. Um, if you have any ideas, you, the listener, about what you want us to talk about, or if you have any burning questions, we are also trying to send out a feedback form. Yeah. Yeah, and if, if you look back, we're, this is now season five, but if you look back on our previous seasons, um, we've had a lot of interviews between students um, and whoever was hosting the show. So, um, you know, if you want to look back in our vaults and see what we've done before, that's one thing. Um, but, you know, we are always looking for brand new ideas and ways to transform the show. So feel free to ask for anyone at MIT. We'll try to get them. Um, and yeah, we, we definitely want to hear what you want to see and what you want to hear from um, people at MIT and the perspectives that you want to learn about. So feel free to just um, to fill out the form that will be in the description of the show. Uh, and we'll be glad to, glad to bring. Uh, so normally we talk about a lot of uh, heavy things on this show. And really it's not on purpose. Um, we just carry heavy consciousnesses around Right now, because there's a lot happening in the world, um, a lot of injustice, a lot of hurt, and a lot of pain. There's also beautiful things, um, and some of those beautiful things are, uh, believe it or not, on campus and at MIT. And this is our fourth year here. Here is like an ambiguous term. We're like sort of, on, even the people on campus are sort of on campus um, because it's COVID. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to just sort of wrap up our senior year with, with some positive experiences and some, some fun things that have happened and fun places and warm memories. So um, yeah, let's, let's get into it. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what, is your, what is your favorite thing 
on campus, just object. Some cool things I've seen and like objects on campus have definitely been some of the labs that I have been in. So when I was a freshman, I thought I was going to be nuclear science and engineering. And I did the freshman pre-orientation program, which I, I recommend if you can do in person. Um, and I did the Discover Nuclear Science and Engineering. Um, and we got to go to the nuclear reactor that we have here on campus, which was really cool. And we also, I did uh, the introductory 22, so the nuclear science class. And we also got to see the reactor and a lot of the cool labs that they had. Um, so I remember one, it was like parents weekend or whatever, and we had class and we went to a lab that has a scanning electron microscope. And yeah. we were like, <laughs> we had the opportunity to put whatever we wanted in there. And um, basically the electrons would like, um, what's the word? like excite whatever material that was in front of it and it would release the characteristic x-rays that could show what material it was and um basically we had the opportunity to put whatever we wanted in there and we had a parent couple that was there and the lady decided to put her ring in there to make sure that <laughs> so the guy this, really. exactly so to see whether it was gold and whether it was also diamond um so the father is next to her kind of sweating and he's like, hey, I think I gave you a replacement ring some years ago. I'm not entirely sure. So the whole class is just sitting there and the, the daughter is also in the class. She's just like, what's going to happen? And he puts it in. It ended up being gold and it ended up being <laughs> real carbon. So a diamond. Um, but I, that was like a fun thing. And it, it just sort of shows how, you know, there's like really serious research going on at MIT, but there's also a lot of cool projects that people are doing. Um, yeah. that, that was like one of my favorite things here at MIT. My favorite thing on campus is that not, the, not that lab. Um, it has to be um, uh, the uh, wind tunnel uh, underneath the green building. So I lived on, uh, I lived in East Campus for a while, which is on the east side of campus, uh, as opposed to most of the dorms, which are on the west side. And um, when you walk out of the main buildings to East Campus, there is a building called the Green Building. And it's like a whole bunch of stories, like 20 or something. It's one of the tallest buildings. The top um, has a whole bunch of like radio and um, earth centering machines and sensors. Um, it has like a radio dome and a dish and a whole bunch of other satellite communication stuff. Yeah. Super cool. um, it's built horribly though. <laughs> um, the bottom is it, it's like it's it's like a person, so it has like a tall upper part, but the bottom it, it's just two pillars with a hole in the middle. Uh, and Boston is actually probably the windiest city in the in the U.S., not Chicago. Uh, it's super windy uh, and this particular space on campus is one of the worst wind tunnels but also super fun because mm -hmm. you'll be walking and it'll be like a nice day and then you just walk next to this building and then the wind hits you and you're like why would they do that <laughs> how would these MIT engineers do this yeah. but they did it yeah and that's just that's just crazy yeah, you talk to your friends and they're just working on these, you know, front end research projects. And it's like, you know, if you, when you don't do as much research, you may not see how advanced MIT is in certain areas. But um, when you get into it and you talk to people who are doing research, you see that like MIT is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm a fairly average Air Astra student. Um, mm -hmm. I've been given the opportunity to, to work on three things that have gone or will go into space. And that's just, that's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Uh, so let's, let's move on to um, some academics, I guess, speaking of professors. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite study place on campus? Yes, there is an answer to this. I love Hayden Library. Uh, Hayden has been through so much. It's been gutted since he, we're here at MIT. It got like renovated, I think my our sophomore year or something. And right now, right? Yeah, and then it, it got gutted again. Um, so that's so unfortunate because that is my, my favorite, favorite library at MIT. Um, and like, 
it's it's interesting. You could tell a lot about someone depending on like what libraries they go to. Like there are people who like Barker, <laughs> which is like infamous for being like quiet and like that's where you really put your nose to the grindstone. Um, mm-hmm. Some people go to the business library. Some people go to Roach Library, or whatever it's called. Um, they're like different libraries. Hayden is mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks over the Charles. I always go to the the second floor. Uh, is what it's called a mezzanine? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it it it's like a nice fun space. They have cool furniture. So that has been the place where I study for finals, where I just like go to read. Um, and I have like this little corner that I go to all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I've always been the type of person that doesn't like studying in my room because I feel like my room right. should be a space that's like relaxing and good for me. So like I will go over a mile to Hayden Library just to relax. Yeah, yeah I've... I've completely failed on the attempt to keep my room sacred from from that, but I've tried. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I completely agree with Hayden. It's a great library. I I like um, I like Roach also, um, yeah. but I I go to this one. I don't see. I was about to mention the spots that I go to. Mm-hmm. I don't want to blow them up, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. I mean, there's like a spot in Roach that's just like a corner with a whole bunch of like really odd um, tables that are super uncomfortable. Yeah, that's a good place. Um, mm-hmm. I like Barker personally because uh, it reminds me of like the void in a in like a oddly calming way. Like you walk in and it's just super quiet, uh, and you just have to <laughs> it's like you cough and you cough and Barker and people like look at you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, always someone just like sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I I think that that was a that's a good space. Also, um, I like just putting in my headphones and then like sitting and and trying to focus. Um, do you ever uh, do like a coffee shop? Like outside or yeah, or, to study. So I've I've gone to Darwin's once. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm, I. That's like was, a lifestyle that I'm not. It was, yeah, it was, it was too active. There were too many software engineers there. <laughs> I was like getting networked. It was too much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, oh, there's also this super wonderful statue sculpture that's just a whole bunch of like a rounded, rounded, extruded surfaces mm-hmm. um on killian that's it's just super comfortable when it's nice uh, yeah. to and half read and half meditate or whatever also sloan is nice like if you go into I'm, i can't remember the name of the place but like they have these cool um study rooms and it's like weird because sloanies will like look at you like uh what are you doing here but i mean whatever i pay for it so it's like you go there um and like i live in Newhouse. So that's like literally the other side of campus. Um, But there's something about getting up and going miles away from where you live and studying. Like, you know, you you don't just get up, go somewhere across campus and not do anything. So um, I feel like the further I am, the more um, focused I am. And speaking of going far, um, the tea I feel is a super underappreciated element of time here mm-hmm. uh public transit is fantastic yeah super pro transit yeah it's, it's really good and it, it's uh, not too expensive here it could be worse no, it's, yeah it's it, they're they are hard to they are hard to uh you know to to enter mm-hmm. with, this is like if you had no money for example like you really just are out of luck, <laughs> unlike some other cities. Yeah, that's true. That's that. It is, it is, um, it's not bad. I think mm-hmm. that, again, think that public transit should be free. Um, people will definitely pay enough taxes for that. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Um, uh, it's, it's cool though. We have our MIT IDs come with um, Charlie, Charlie Park. Park. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. do you have a favorite key line? So I, okay, so. I've always been along the red line, like where I've lived. Um, 
So the red line is what I take frequently. Um, but I think for me, I've appreciated the buses a lot more than the trains. Like, because, you know, there's, there's actually a very important history to the T and public transportation in Boston. And if you look at the distribution of the T and, you know, different neighborhoods of different socioeconomic statuses, you'll really see how it works. So you'll see that like, you know, where the trains are, they're, you know, tend to be more affluent, there's a lot more access. And buses had to be, you know, built or had to be like the, the all the routes had to be constructed around areas that did not have access. So those are lower income areas. So you appreciate the buses in Boston because they are really what give you access to like, the entire city. Um, so like if you go to MIT, you'll take the one bus everywhere. It goes all the way up and down Mass Ave, which is like, you know, most one of the major streets that connect Cambridge and uh, Boston. Um, yeah, and like, yeah, I, I've, it's like, it's interesting. You'll be somewhere in Boston and there'll be like a bus around. So you could just like hop on and get wherever you need to go. So um, yeah, I think I've, I've also appreciated public transportation for that reason, because it's like, when you're a broke college student, you can't Uber everywhere. Um, so yeah. like at MIT also, they give you discounted passes that are like 50% off, which is actually unheard of. Um, I've talked to people from other schools and they've said like, yeah, we had no such offers. So um, if you're the type of person that, you know, needs to like get off campus a lot, I really would encourage you to not just use your ID, but try to get like a monthly pass or something, which um, is heavily discounted here. Uh, monthly pass for, for what? You could get it for like both train and the bus. Oh, or you wow. could get like more advanced ones that like go to the commuter rail. Um, yeah, that you probably that's, won't. that's true. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to think, I don't think I've ever been on the bus here. Um, recently I've been going, uh, so also before, before now, um, I've been absolutely just like drowning in MIT. Uh, work and, and like investing myself really heavily in a lot of the systems and programs here mm -hmm. and so I ended up like not really going off campus all that much mm -hmm. um, I'd like an embarrassing amount of not doing that um, but recently I've been I've been moving around a, a lot more um, just like exploring and going around um, mm -hmm. I've been doing that a lot on on the skateboard, but one of the my favorite parts of Boston is the blue bike system. I really rock. Yeah. Uh, it's it's normally like kind of expensive. It's like two fifty, uh, two dollars and fifty cents for uh, thirty minutes. Um, but MIT and other like local Boston programs. Um, offer cheaper, cheaper systems, so cheaper uh, subscriptions. And I think there's one that's like $36 for a whole year, which is amazing. Um, and so I've, I use that to like bounce back and forth around um, campus and then also like go across the river sometimes. Um, now I've been using the, the MBTA a lot more, um, but I didn't know about that about the buses. That's super interesting. But I think um, my favorite T line uh, is the green line. Um, I, I love the red line. I think it also goes to great places. I mm -hmm. like, you know, it goes from MIT all the way to Airwave, which I've been to once when my parents came. Um, mm -hmm. they, they came, <laughs> um, was over in Alewife. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess funny story is that also, that was the only day that I showed up on time for a 9 a.m. class. <laughs> is when I had to go to Alewife and mm -hmm. come back. Uh, what's your favorite? food and what's the worst food on campus or in the surrounding area? Yeah, so. There's like absolutely no disrespect toward the establishments. This is a personal experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, food has been so interesting. Um, I've eaten in a lot of the um, dining halls. I feel like I've eaten in every one. Yeah, I think I have. Um, and I always go to Next House. I think Next House, probably only second to Simmons has the best food on campus. Um, so yeah, those are different dorms that we have. Um, some dorms here at MIT have dining halls and some don't. Um, mine did not. So we would go over to Next House to eat food. Um, 
great dining hall staff, uh, just super kind, very sweet people. Um, so it's like, it's interesting because you're going to the same staff all the time. You sort of build a rapport with them. Um, so I've always gone to Next House. I feel like the food is good. It's not always healthy, unfortunately. Um, yeah. And it, it's hard to eat healthy on campus a lot of times. And, you know, we can talk about how, you know, as a student, you know, the stress of just being at MIT and all the work that you have to do can just lead you down unhealthy paths. But um, Next House has been the best place for me. Simmons is also really great. They have like really great variety of food. Um, and it's the pandemic has definitely shifted how food is here on campus. But uh, mm -hmm. Next House has always been my top choice. Yeah, and I, it's also important to decouple the people that work at these places who mm -hmm. do their best, absolute best, put love into the food, and also just um, the powers that be that just give them, give them bad conditions to, bad conditions and ingredients. Um, looking at you, Bon Appetit, be better. Um, I, so I lived in Baker the first year, um, did not super enjoy the food there. I've been to, I think I've also been to every, every uh, eating uh, yeah. dining hall. That's dining it, hall. dining hall. Um, I think my favorite was definitely next. I would, I walked in and was like, this is a restaurant. Um, yeah. Dining hall. Also really like nicely set up. Um, but I've only been there once. I think I went to Simmons once. Um, and then I mostly just, mostly just went to Massey, which, and Baker, which are appropriately known as like the most okay. Food. <laughs> um, outside of that, I think I think my absolute favorite food. Um, yeah, here I am blowing up a spot again. I'm I'm not even going to say where it is. It's a shrimp banh mi um, that that is made by um, Janelle. I think that was her name. If you're listening to Janelle, I love you and your sandwiches. They were amazing. <laughs> they literally lifted my day. Yeah. And just crispy bread, nice, nice shrimp, just wonderful. Yeah. I also order a lot. Uh, it's bad. It's terrible, actually. Um, so I, I order from a lot of Asian restaurants. Um, so, and when I say Asian, I mean like, like appropriated American fatty Asian food. Um, so I've had some really cool stuff. Like there's Hong Kong over at Harvard Square that has really good food. Um, there's Pepper Sky over in Central Square, which has great Thai food. Um, there's a lot of food options here. So if, if you're like in the middle of a suburb or rural area, just know that if you come to MIT, you will have options and options and options. And I think going out places with friends has probably been the most fulfilling um, thing. So I was like at the smokehouse the other week, I saw Gabe pass by, um, which was really good food. Um, so yeah, there's just like a lot of cool stuff to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my favorite places, um, I'm gonna say used to be, I feel different about it now, having gone to the other, the other, iteration of it um it was friendly toast yeah is right next to smokehouse which was mentioned it's in uh like the kendall area which is sort of like north east northwest of, of mit um it, it, it's the, it's like a really cute quirky restaurant um they have nice a nice like interesting uh diverse uh comfort food. Um, yeah. They shut down the Cambridge one, by the way. Yeah, the, the Cambridge one is, is solid. The the acclaimed rapper Vince Staples did say that Boston has the best food in the United States. So that's that's a bold, that's about that's a bold statement. <laughs> right, he's from he's from LA too, so or Long Beach, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, have you had a um, lobster rolls? I, Lobster rolls, uh, lobsters are an ethically questionable food, but um, <laughs> I, I hadn't had one until this year and I did not like it. Yeah, I've never been crazy about like big shellfish, like crab or lobster. Um, one, because I couldn't afford it for a very long time. <laughs> for like a good part of my life, that was a little bit above <laughs> my family's um, 
yeah, condition. But um, I would say I have not had any lobster in any of the restaurants, even though like Boston is known for good. There is good seafood in Boston. I will give Boston that. It's rather unfortunately easy to um, to come to Boston, like MIT, and, and not have a Bostonian experience. Yeah. Um, you actually do have to try to get out, but when you do, it's it's a it's a cool city with with um, a lot of things to see. Yeah. Uh, and before we started recording, um, you talked about a um, an exhibit that you went to. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. So there is this really so the you, if you come to Boston, you should come to the MFA. Um, I think MIT students can get in for free most of the time. Yeah, or, I think there's. Yeah, we get like a college pass. Um, so there's this um, really amazing, uh, he was a graffiti artist uh, who was in New York. His last name is Basquiat. I can't, I took a picture. I can't remember his um, first. Michael, yeah. yeah, exactly. John Michelle, I think. Yeah, um, I took. Sorry, people. What is his name? John yeah. Michelle. Yeah, Jean, yeah, thank you. Um, and he had like this whole crew that he used to run with. They were called. Uh, they had like a they had like a group. They were like a um, street artist, basically, and they had like this entire gang. Um, and yeah, yeah, exact. Thank you. And they just made this. They had like this whole movement of just street art back in the 80s in New York. Um, and they made an exhibit here at the MFA. And it wasn't just to graffiti and street art. It was also just to like the music of the time, the hip hop that came around that time, the other artists that were influenced by this one group of artists. Um, beautiful exhibit. Uh, and I don't know how long it'll be around. It, it sold out the day that we went, um, which was just yesterday, they sold out. Um, but it just sort of takes you through who they were, the, you know, the, the important pieces that they created. Um, yeah, and I, I think that, you know, it's in the MFA, which is like, you know, a lot of fine and <laughs> fancy paintings like you would expect in a museum. But I think the MFA did a really great job of just taking you through, um, you know, the time and really immersing you in, you know, the environment of what happened. So the MFA has been probably a, a height of being here at MIT. Like, they have a, ro a lot of like cool stuff and they'll do like exhibits every now and then. They'll do a Juneteenth ce celebration every year, um, celebrating s some more art and music. Um, so yeah, if you come to MIT, I would definitely suggest you go to the MFA, mm -hmm. explore what they have, take cool pictures, go with your friends. Uh, and it's enjoyable, it's really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, no, shout out Basquiat, hey, Haitian and Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. just doing, Beautiful art, yeah. yeah. Um, I I went to the Isabella Stewart mm -hmm. Art Museum, which is like right next to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a museum complex, complex as as a lot of cities have. Um, located on the Green Line, <laughs> um, and it's it's like a really nice train in it, the the train at that at that area like goes on um, goes above ground and it's really pretty. Um, mm -hmm. I. I have a lot of mixed feelings about um, ISG. Uh, it's also free to MIT students, I think, through the same sort of like agreement. Mm -hmm. um, but there was just a lot of cultural artifacts that were here in Boston instead of where they, where they belong. Even honestly, like that might even be said for Basquiat, but there there is a there is an importance also to like sharing. Uh, elements of those cultures like my sister my sister's an artist um and her biggest inspirations are Basquiat and Warhol who mm -hmm. also convened um and she's not she's not um New York mm -hmm. she's not New York but that that sort of that culture is is is, is for better or worse also American culture mm -hmm. um, and and Isabella Stewart Gardner was this um philanthropist um, which means so many things and also nothing at the same time. Uh, mm -hmm. Who went around the world just like collecting a lot of Venetian pieces, um, a lot of Italian pieces, and a lot of just general pieces, um, a lot of them from China. 
and just has them all in this like really beautiful palace that she built. Um, and there's just a lot to be said about her in a palace, mm -hmm. her homeless around, and also just having like this much, this much cultural wealth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, send it, send it back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you? It, have you? It's also beautiful. Yeah. Have you been to the ICA, the Institute of Contemporary Art? Uh, yes, I have. It was a while ago. I want to go back to all these places now that I'm, now that I, like, I feel like I've, I've grown um, in, in my appreciation of art, um, mm -hmm. my of it, and also just culture, and I want to revisit a lot of things. Mm -hmm. which I'm definitely trying to go see the Basquiat exhibit. exhibit. Um, but speaking of also areas, uh, in Boston, do you have any particular spots in Boston that you've you've grown fond of? So I recently went to the Arboretum. Have you been there before? Yeah, that's like out Jamaica Plain, I think. Like, um, really beautiful. I mean, it's the fall, so everything's kind of dying. But like, I imagine if I go there in the oh, spring. Dramatic. Yeah, it is very dramatic. Like. <laughs> it just suddenly got cold and snowed and everything so um yeah that's a cool area to go to um there's a lot of cool restaurants out in the seaport a little bit more pricey but mm -hmm. it's cool there's a waterfront uh you can see a lot of cool things out there and like I like Cambridge a lot Cambridge is like it's not Boston it's 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 like half suburban half urban um, so there's like cool parks and you can walk along the Charles and I think the Charles is probably my favorite thing about Boston, Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. The river, I was going to say the river is, is wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. the LA river is a sad excuse for, uh, <laughs> urban planning, e ecology, <laughs> everything. Um, yeah, I, uh, and I've, Really enjoyed the river actually now that I think about it. Um I went how to sail mm. a couple years ago um through a PE class actually. MIT PE um it has is a super extensive program. Uh and you can do things like archery and um shooting guns, uh skiing, uh mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um well and sailing was really fun. I enjoyed it. I think I failed the class because I like didn't show up um, to <laughs> like I didn't show up to enough classes. And I think I I remember very distinctly I went to like a differential equations uh, study session instead, which was dumb. Definitely should have just gotten the sailing thing. But you know mm -hmm. now I'm not a tack and jive whatever. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. If I ever get onto a sailboat, we'll, we'll see how much I remember. <laughs> um, I've been, as I said, I've been exploring a little more. Um, I really enjoyed um, Rockbury is great. I think it doesn't get enough love. Mm. Um, just a wonderful place with a lot of history. Um, there's, the, I, I will recommend to people um, to, if you're interested, to look up um, and if you're if you're in Boston or if you're planning on coming or you know going to be a future MIT or Boston area student, definitely look up Black Boston and the history of of Black people and Blackness in Boston because, um, you know I I came here and like you know didn't really see that many because MIT is not super Black, um, not super. Mm -hmm. It's like fairly diverse for a institution as as elite as it is, but mm -hmm. also you know. It's not. Um, but Boston is now like 25% Black. There's a lot of Im immigrants. Um, and it has a super, super, super rich history. Yeah. Uh, there was the first, um, there's a lot of firsts here. Uh, look into all of that um, if you're interested. Um, yeah, like I, we, have, we have the Freedom Trail out here. Um, yeah. I can't remember, like there's different sites that you can see along it. So that's another cool thing to do here. Yeah, um, there's, there's like the, the traditional freedom trail, um, which is the, the revolutionary trail and then also like- a, Yeah, the black one. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yesterday I went on, um, I, I took that train with a few friends and we went up to Rockport. 
um, or we tried and then the the train stopped instead in Manchester by the sea because they were fixing a bridge or something um, and we decided to just stay there and it was gorgeous that place is super idyllic it's like a painting out of a like the traditional north northeastern um, city on the water there's a whole bunch of boats and like a really gentle um, gulf and the, the sunset was crazy fall is beautiful everything dies very dramatically <laughs> but also recommend if you're just take commuter rails they're really inexpensive it was ten dollars per person mm -hmm. you can take the commuter rails many times as you want over the weekend it was so fun um you know, just explore if you can. Um, yeah. If they have COVID regulations, there were very few people on the train, everyone with the mask. Mm -hmm. It was great. All right, so that was really interesting. Um, I'm going to try to go to Rockport at some point, probably. I, you know, when you're from an area, sometimes you, you're limited in where you actually branch out. So mm -hmm. I've never really hopped on the commuter rail without a reason. So um, I think that would be interesting to explore, actually. So, you know, we have the holiday season upon us. Do you have any special plans? Are you headed back to California? Probably for December. Um, are you, do you think you're gonna go back home for um, the end of year holidays? I might, I, I don't see why not. Like I'm so close by. I, there's, there's always a point where I don't feel like I'm even away from home right now, cause I'm so close. Um, so yeah, probably we'll try to do that. Also, IEP is super long this year. It's like two extra weeks. Um, oh. So the semester starts like mid-February as opposed to the start. So I'm probably gonna try to see some friends also during the break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, well, Gabe, it was really great catching up with you. Um, we'll definitely talk a little bit more. We have a lot of exciting things coming up for sure, so. Um, to our listeners, definitely make sure to fill out that form. And hopefully some interviews and yeah, the link, um, it'll be in the description, ideally, um, you know, find it. If, if you want to talk to us, uh, you, you can, you know where we are. <laughs> yeah, so definitely best of luck with the holidays um, and the rest of the semester. I know it's been so hard to get through this semester. Um, so definitely wishing you the best with your studies. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to our, our to all our viewers. Um, and yeah, definitely make sure to come back for our next episode. All right, bye everyone.